Okay, I don't know if this is working. Hopefully, we are up and running. I think we're good to go. All right, I don't know if anyone's in here, just getting this sorted. Chicken, wave, hello. Just doing some posts and the idea is that we can let people know that we're live. See if anybody wants to drop by. I heard I have some people in here. Hopefully volume's all right. I'll apologize if I start coughing. I'm currently getting over COVID, which is not been fun. Do, 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 do. Where's the shared link? Let's copy this. Oh. Oh, I've already got the um, the headset connected to Unreal. Uh, we've got the project going. Um, what if it's worth doing a little walkthrough of what I've been working on? Because I don't know if I've already shown off this section. Um, do some bug fixes in here, I think. Doc, oh, hi. Welcome to the stream. I'm going to try and do some blueprints. If I back out of that, I'm going to close this window. Let's go from there. Hopefully it's not going to lag or anything too bad, but we'll go from there. 
Chris, how's it going? Not too bad. I'm currently getting over COVID. So the idea is to just do some simple blueprint stuff. Unless I can smash things up. We got weapon holsters, which I think there's some bugs in this which could do with fixing. And then I've been working on a key card system. Um, we've got our pull levers, which that needs fixing. Yeah, this is my pride and joy. Again, rotating wheel. The math to get this work was a nightmare. I'm going to do a tutorial on it, to be honest. And then flick switches, although they're a little bit touchy. So I think it's just a switched around. Got the drawers. We can look in. Don't know how well they work with physics. And then we've got a little spline based button. So none of it uses physics. That way we can have more control over it. A little bit less costly as well. And then I've got a touch button on here as well. And this was one thing that was added. I don't think it's in the update, but the idea is that you can slide it. And this is basically just a take on the draw, except I just switched out the, the mesh for a cylinder at a background, which it currently doesn't work with a light. So the idea is to kind of figure that out. We got our guns, which we can load. Quite nice. Got a new rifle with kind of two-handed. It doesn't do the rotate like rotation on the side. So I'm struggling with the the math for that. But we've got the gun. So we're having a little bit more interactive stuff in it, which is quite nice. Fixed pointer stuff, move mechanics all still in there. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of working on that and then some of the documentation on that and a lot of the back end. So I've been setting up the, the level loading to automatically use a uh, screen fade. So if you call it from the game instance, it'll automatically screen fade and then once fade completes, it'll then load the level for you, which works much nicer. Let's go. Um... You could be driving a submarine. I saw I saw that one going viral on Reddit, which is, is quite good. But yes, you could you could have these all set up as individual things, and that's going to be the plan is to go through these and set them up as child actors, so you can add them to different blueprints, and it'll automatically know when they've been fired or worked. Um, Ogadia, have you experienced with Unity? I've been using it for the last three or four years and developed the quest, but I'm seriously thinking of moving over to Unity Unreal. I started with Unity and I lasted about three months before I scrapped it and moved to Unreal. Uh, so I, I mentioned this before on stream, but I'm dyslexic. So the C sharp code and all that kind of stuff just made things take so much longer for me. So the idea was to just switch to Unreal and then they introduced blueprints, which was a life changer. Math. I suck at math. I suck at math. The both have overlapping app, overlapping UVs. I know. So I took these. The bulbs themselves are actually taken from the um, the blueprint example. So I could reuse them in the template just to save some time. So if I load these up, if I get this loaded, kind of just go through the chat quickly. Oh, okay, that's not one. Never mind. So slow to load up Unreal. Oh, the Epic Launcher. Which one was it? Content example. So that's what it was. So I loaded up the content example so I could use the the meshes from that, and that has the overlapping UVs. But it you can kind of ignore it. It's not gonna break it's not the end of the world, it's not gonna break anything. Um Does the push button trigger the animation depress or is it physics? Collision based on the controller depresses the button until it triggers. 
So the push button thing, which is the one, this one here that we're talking about, is actually a spline, so we can control how far it depresses. And then if I open this up, we do a bit of math in here. But basically what it does is we get an overlap of our hand, and then we start the timer, and we use that to track the position of the button along the spline. And then when we end our overlap, we turn off the, the timing, which makes it a lot better, so you can control when it's working. That way, if the player is not interacting with it, there's no event tick running in the background to update its position. Uh, can you use hands instead of controllers, and is it hard to make the hands physically interact with the object? Like use the switch with a with a finger rather than a collision box. If you know what I'm what I mean, I do. So it is quite simple. The idea is to build this up. So in here, you have a data asset character variables. We have a section show controllers. If we disable this, it'll then use our skeleton mesh hands. Uh, we won't hide hands. Use UI pointer with hands. Uh, we disable that one, I think it is. So now, as soon as I press play, and I make sure this is on my head. As soon as we press play, we now have a set of hands with invisible colliders on the fingers, which is moved around. And the idea is when we get close to it, we can actually use the finger to press the button. And then we do the same thing with the flick switches. So there's a lot of work to be done with these to make them a lot nicer. But since we're targeting quest and performance everything, we're not using physics. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the background to make this work. And the idea is you can switch between controllers and hands using this template or using this file, essentially which makes it much, much easier to work with. Um, I try, uh, uh, how about guns attached on player? They are, so we have a holster system. So they spawn when you do, and then they rotate to match. And if you don't want them, you can simply open up the player and go into the blueprint, VR character, and if you don't want the storage, you'd literally just de delete the child actor item storage child. And then when you press play, they won't be there anymore. So the idea is kind of modular code and then make everything as removable as easy to use. So if you're doing an archivist project, you can kind of delete what you don't need. If you're doing a game, you can add what you need and then go from there. Um, Chris Thomas, I think I'm changing Unreal purely on the basis of seeing if I can achieve better quality looking software, the program, etc., is fine as my background is in C Sharp. So C Sharp won't really help you in this. A lot of people have issues switching over from um, from Unity. But if you just sit down for a bit and then have a look through it, Unreal have some documentation on switching from Unity to Unreal as well, so that'd be fine. But um, for purely visuals and better quality stuff, Unreal is where it's at. You don't have to code any of all, like, you don't have to code all, all of that. It just saves you so much time. Um, Jane, do you think the math has gotten somewhat better? Or do you think your math has gotten somewhat better with Unreal Engine as you naturally work with it, coding logic? It's definitely got better. Like, without a doubt. <laughs> I, I'm doing vector math and algebra in this that I wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do during my day-to-day -day normally. So having the, the stuff in the background helps a lot. So as you can see, there's a, there's a lot going on here. And I would have been, a, been able to do this otherwise. So this is the event graph. And then we've even got the movement graph, which controls all the movement mechanics that are in the template. Uh, did I add the storage back in? I did. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on in here that's not directly linked to the player as well. So in the game instance, uh, not game, yeah, it's game instance. I've then got a setup in here so we can call any actor. So any actor here, we've got snap to location, uh, load level one, browse to asset, and then open this up. All you need to do is fire this uh, load new level. So get game instance, load new level, choose a level name to load. It automatically tells the game instance what level you're loading, and then it'll tell the player to screen fade. 
and once the screen fades complete, we then open the level. So I, I try to make it as easy to use and as modular as possible. And um, one of the biggest things I've been working on this week is I've actually changed the player around it slightly. So you can create new data character variables. So you could do, uh, duplicate this and let's call it character arc viz. So the current one has it's set up for skeleton mesh hands. This one I could change it to teleport only, show controllers, use UI on, UI on points, save, and then I can then take the player, duplicate this guy, VR character, arc viz, and change the do, do, do character variables from here to the new ArcViz player. And now in the game mode, I could just change the player to the ArcViz template. And now when I press play, we automatically spawn with the ArcViz content in its place. So you can kind of have it go through and, and it's made it a lot more modular, a lot easier to use as well. So I'll just switch this back. It also allows me to work on new examples so I can do some new levels and create a full architecture demo version. And then one level could be a full game. Um, any plans for implementing hand tracking? Not with this, you would have to do it yourself. Um, hand tracking is only available through the MetaXR tool plugin. But um, at the minute, unless hand tracking comes natively to OpenXR, I think it's in there at the minute technically, but it's not great. Then you would have to do it that way. Two seconds, guys. Okay, I think I'm back. Voice is working. Sorry about that. Any plans to implement hand tracking? Um, but yeah, as it is, not right now. It's something you'd have to add yourself. Um, the idea is to make this a general tool that you can use to get started with VR. So you could you could easily clone the player and then add what you need into it. Um, once it comes to OpenXR and it's a bit more stable, then I could look at just duplicating the VR character and then creating a VR character with hand tracking. But I don't I don't want this plugin to rely at all on the Meta XR plugin. Because if we do that, it means people with a Vive Focus 3 or the new Focus Plus or whatever it is, um, Pico Neo, that kind of thing, won't be able to really access this anymore. And it, it makes it you're basically removing a whole area of people that want to get started. Um, now I, I, I started this up and I didn't plan on where I was going with it. Oh, hands. I'm sure hands as well. Am I using my hands? Yeah. So I set this up so when you get close to an object, you can grab it and the hands will move. It's being much nicer. Which is quite nice. Kind of play around with it. Can't climb up because there's nothing there. Oh, that was a weird little bug. It started floating. Wonder why I was floating. Yeah, 
Yeah, I wonder why this wants me going through these. So even do some updates. You always check my list as well. So how's everybody else doing? You all alright? I also need to record a trailer for this, but I'm not too sure where to even start with that. Um, yeah, kind of been adding the documentation into it. So we've got some more stuff to work with. So I've got to write all this up properly and go from there. But um, Still got a decent amount of stuff to add in. Physical slider example, done. Additions. I've got two new movement methods I want to add in there. Open XR load screen. I could do a load screen. Could work on that. Although it makes it difficult because you guys don't see it on see it on the stream. Open XR load screen. Because the benefit of that is inside the game instance we can have it controlled through here. So event fade screen complete, we then do the open XR load screen. Let's do We're gonna do a dive into this and see how it goes. Great, good, deep, hi, hello, welcome. Darth, good morning. Let me show what stats we don't need that. So let's. So we fire that, we do show loading screen, and then we would do set loading screen. I think it's loading screen. Then show splash. It's going to be a really good template once all the target goal is achieved. That's the plan. I started working on some of the multi multiplayer stuff as well. So um, in the VR character, I've been working on do, 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 do. where are we event graph? Oh, it keeps changing every time. It's worst thing. Doing some controller replication. So basically setting up the whole template to work like the VR uh, work like the ArcViz multi user template, whatever it's called. Ah. Uh, I think they removed it out of VR, but basically it'll add local, local multiplayer to the template. So if you're doing an ArcViz project and you want multiple people to join it, you'll be able to do so with this as well, which I think is going to be quite a nice feature to add. Did you make a game before? Um, not so much as an actual game. But my background's in ArcViz and e-learning, so I use all blueprints and Unreal to build educational content of that nature. So people can join in and learn something while they're, while they're doing stuff. And I do that for businesses and, yeah, businesses and everyone else who needs it. So I'm just kind of using that. So this, this really is an amalgamation of everything that I've needed in VR to create a project uh, the idea is you just boot this up and save a crazy amount of time so if you're doing an office project select controllers select pointers add umg will umg elements and drop your building into a new level where you should be good to go that kind of thing just to make it easy for everyone 
it's midnight over here in Australia, Sydney, so technically it's morning. Eh, it's technically morning, we'll count that. Uh, okay, support for full body IK and upper body IK. Eventually, I'd like to duplicate the player blueprint. So, as someone mentioned earlier, I'd like to duplicate the player blueprint and then swap, swap one out for a hand tracking version. And then have another one which is set up for full body IK. But that's easier to add once everything else is in place. And go from there. Because the idea is to keep this as simple as possible for people to get going with. If I start adding a whole bunch of stuff to overcomplicate it, it's going to alienate a lot of people. The idea is to make this easier for beginners to get started with. Um, so how do we really update new version? Let's say I build my game on your current version. Um, it's, ooh, I'm not entirely sure on the best way to do that. Um, you can update inside of the vault. So in here, it will have the GDXR template and then it'll tell you to update when there's one available. And then once you do that, it'll allow you to create a new project from that. Uh, really at the minute, it's a case of you kind of use what's available and then ideally you would stick with it which is why I'm trying to get through as many of the things as possible. Um, I was planning on waiting, but a lot of people were quite eager to get their hands on this through the Epic Marketplace, which is why it's available now. Which I know isn't, isn't the most fantastic thing, but because I do a lot of rebuilding and redesigning to make it easier on, like from people's feedback as well, then that's the best solution to go with. I also need to remove that event tick for now. Because the whole the whole player doesn't rely not, nothing relies on event tick apart from gaze interaction, I think. Which I have disabled by default. What have I got on my list? Oh, OpenXR load screen. What am I doing? Getting distracted. That's what it is. Um, texture. We just want something random. Translation. I'm pretty sure this is minus. Minus three. Y. Minus three. I can never remember which way it is. So as soon as screen fade finishes, we then show the open XR load screen. And I don't think you guys will be able to see this, but I'll be able to test it in the headset. Can't remember whereabouts it'll spawn. I just see black. Problem is, I can never remember where the thing freaking shows up. I also don't know why we've just got a black screen now. Did adding an open XR load screen break it?
Okay, why are we... It just crashed. Okay, so that's not good. Hopefully stream's still good. Uh, I'll boot it back up now. Hopefully we can play this without it crashing. There we go. That's better. Oh, one thing I did have to fix, which I think Yeah, the restart immediately just snaps to black, so it doesn't do the screen fade. So I want to do that while I'm remembering it. Load new level. So now when I test this, it should fade to black. Do, 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 do. And then fade in. Excellent. That's nicer. So that shows you how much easier the screen fade stuff is now. Cool. I'm gonna go through and just see what we can fix. Oh, my nose, so itchy. And then... Oh, by the way, if anybody wants to follow along with the, um, the documentation page, then you can do so using the link or using this link. Um... There you go. Should be good. Um, template looks great. Is it also suitable for uh, PC VR HMD like in my case 5 Pro and 5 Pro 2 it is it is built off OpenXR so it'll work with any headset and all the inputs are set up to work with uh, Valve Index 5 Mixed Reality and Oculus at the minute and because it uses OpenXR you can use it with any HMD so the idea is to build I've been building this for the target goal of Oculus Quest specifically to support mobile devices such as the the MetaQuest Quest Pro, uh, Quest 2, and then there's the Pico and Vive Focus, uh, so the Valve Index, HTC Vive Focus 3, and the new one. Basically, it works on any device, desktop or mobile, uh, VR, desktop or mobile. 
Um, the only thing that I've done is actually change the materials to use uh, fully rough. So if I open up a material, is they all use fully rough in the template out of the box. And the template does use forward rendering. Uh, the reason for that is a lot of people are using this on Quest. So the shader complexity is as good as I can humanly possibly get it. So there's been a, there's been a lot of work on it, apart from the camera. Um, but yeah, so even the skeletal mesh hands that are like static mesh templates and stuff with transparency, I've been through and optimized the living crap out of it. A lot of people seem to be downloading it, even from the Patreon and that, and then um, trying to put it on Quest and just having issues with it. So if I can remove as much stuff out of that as possible from the beginning, then that'll be the best way to go. But to make it work on desktop, it's literally plug and play. It'll run out the box. Um, but what you might want to do is hop over to uh, rendering and project settings, and you can go through and disable forward rendering if you want to, enable some of the ambient occlusions and the, the default post-process stuff, and add in the do, 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 sky atmosphere stuff. So it's a, it's up to you entirely how you use this, but out of the box it's set up for mobile VR, but it does work with any VR. I hope I've repeated that enough. <laughs> um, is that board Elysian? No, it's, um, it's built through Notion. So I'm using Notion to keep track of everything. So yeah. So support platforms. It uses the Quest, and then um, it supports Steam VR, any platform. But right now, the Vive Focus Three Wave plugin required for development doesn't support 5.1 in Unreal. But as soon as that's out, I'll be testing it and then letting people know as well. So. Hopefully that helps. Simon, I use Rift S and Valve Index and all work just fine. Excellent. I think the only thing I might need to test is the old um, the old wand controllers from the HTC. But they should be set up to work out of the box. I just haven't tested them 100%. But I do, it does work on my Valve Index as well, which is quite nice. It's the benefit of OpenXR and the enhanced input system, which I'm using. So all the inputs procedurally change themselves depending on what movement method you're using. Because a lot of people keep asking if you can move it back to 4.27, but you can't just because we're utilizing the enhanced input system. It's all of this. I hope that helps at the end, like, my little rant helps. Rant, ramble, I don't know what you call it. Let's see if this crashes again. I wonder if there's something wrong with splash screens in 5.1. Go, face to black, then we load back into the new level. I'm going to see if this crashes again. I wonder if I need to delay. I wonder if it was like snapping in and then causing a freeze. So we artificially inflate the delay before opening the level. Which I think for this will be fine anyway. It should just stay black. Yeah. And then in the VR character, we can do 
the remove load screen. We could do it in the player, or do it in the level. So as soon as it starts, we remove the load screen. But that way you would have to remember to remove it then. Um, let's try it in the event graph and see how that goes. So event initialize, we remove screen fades. Hide load screen. Let's see how this goes. There we go. Cool. I don't know if the load screen does it show in here. It takes its time, so it might actually load in. Alden, good morning. Thanks for dropping by. It's always strange when everyone's like, good morning, good night, and this whole time zones are all messed up. <laughs> Problem is, I can never remember which direction this pushes it out to. So, just got to do some testing. I've used this guy before, 64 by 64, size 10 by 10, rotation, kind of just play with values. I might have to load up the old, the old template that I built. Just so I'm not guessing yeah, the values. Oh. Hmm. Um, let's take a look and see what the Epic Games stuff says. Like the documentation. Epic Games, um, Open XR load screen. Bring that over so you guys can see as well. Open XR. So are you a video about software occlusion culling in U4? Just found out they removed it in five. Guess what I put in put it back. Yeah, guess what I put it back in U5 and work perfectly. Huh. I know they've took it out of five and they've replaced it with GPU culling or something. But I don't think anybody knows how to freaking use it. I'm hoping they add something back in because they tell you to use a custom solution. Or at least they do on the Oculus stuff. So if I find that again, actually, I'll be able to show anyone in here. It'll be helpful for people in here. Um, oh, notifications. Quest 2. Um... Pretty sure there's a link in here that we've got. There it is. So there's a section in here, something to do with the occlusion culling. Or the CPU, and they're just like, so there, UFI removed CPU occlusion culling. Apps that reply on this must implement a custom occlusion system or switch to GPU occlusion culling. 
GPU culling has few significant downsides you need to be aware of. U5 renders a result a frame late, so you'll need to em you'll see emptiness for one frame if you if you face through a wall. Um, GPU culling causes more work for the GPU and things system. GPU is already maxed out on Quest anytime you're doing VR dev like VR development, so it's a bit bit nuts anyway. But yeah. But yeah, Alden, if you've got some kind of solution for this, I would love to like hear about it because I was looking at seeing about building one for the template and just building it in there. But it seems like it's, I don't know if I've just got the patience to sit down and do it yet. Um, is it morning in your time zone? No, it is currently one o'clock. Um, I mean, yeah, I saw that. Still have no idea why they took it off. Because it working just fine. It was working great. I think they removed it something to do with um. It's probably nanite or lumen based. They probably removed it because of that. But um, yeah, they keep making loads of progress towards VR development in Unreal, and then that kind of just pushed everything back. It's nine a.m. here. Oh god, no. Like my morning's been mental. It's it's literally one o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm drinking an energy drink. <laughs> it is a weak one, but still, that's how my day's going. Can't use nanite on mobile anyway. Why well, took it off? Yeah, I don't know. Nobody knows. But I haven't seen any solution that improves it either. Um. Offset 1, Z 0.5. Okay, let's try that. Linus, do you know C++? Uh, I, I know it's a small amount of it, but um, everything I do is in blueprints. Just for speed, and my dyslexic ass can't remember everything. With C plus plus, I've done this, and I need the headset on so I can see the freaking thing. <laughs> Still can't see it. So you want to try it? You can compile my build and try it yourself. Be sitting down and going through it, I think it'll be the hard part. Plus, I don't have um, Unreal Source installed, so it'll be a bit of a pain. Especially if I've got to go through things. Um... Not loading screen. Ah, am I doing it wrong? I'm showing the loading screen before I actually add anything to it. Add loading screen. Let's try and remove that one. Do this texture. You skill. Uh, which one was it? One and then point five. Let's try that. Have you considered making a VR game? I have. This is technically part of it. I've kind of been working on this to get to a point where. I can do that. Aha! I saw it. I don't know if you guys saw it. Let's have a look. Oh, you can actually see OpenXR now. Oh, that's so good! Oh god. You could never use you could never see the load like OpenXR load screen before. So you had to have a, a 
a widget snapped on the screen, which is always offset, and then load it in, and then now, oh, yes! Let's open a Photoshop and do some stuffs. Um, that's my excitement for today. Chigan, it's interesting to see someone as experienced as you still taking the time to learn functions and their uses. Do you think Blueprints is where you're always learning as opposed to mastering it? It's like that with code. It, you're always learning something. It's impossible to learn every function in every node and what it does. Um, it's a bit of a controversial one, but in, in the Discord, in the moderator channel yesterday, I was explaining how I was using uh, ChatGPT to not, not exactly give me the code, but help me learn new functions and new math to help me get to the, the point that I needed to get to. And um, none of it was ever accurate. It didn't work, but it would suggest a node like, um, like one of them was the two I cave. So two born IK, it was telling me to use, I've never used this before, but it was like, you could try using this so you can set up two handed positioning on blueprints. Uh, it was completely wrong, but it was still like new nodes to learn and new things to go from. Um, Everything's always learning. Simon, I'm making a VR space game, but there is so much work involved as I'm doing it on my own. Far more work than you would imagine. It's so true. Like I've been working on this with a page, like over on Patreon and that for, I think, six or seven months now this is this is like the largest version like iteration of it because it originally started in um 4.26 i think with what i had so it's always that iteration like iteration process and there's so much to do and to go with that you kind of just need to pick something that works for you small and simple is the way it's at i'm opening up photoshop I think the idea is to do the OpenXR load screen, but I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take the GDXR logo and put it in there so you can have it layered. Oh, I'm using ChatGPT to help me learn functions as well. It does help. And as you said, it has its errors. It's got so many errors. It, it's a great tool though to point out new things. Um, your best bet though is probably just drop by the discord and ask us if you if you there's something you're trying to do and there's a function we can point out it's probably the best way to do it we'll just tell you because <laughs> like in this chat gpt isn't perfect and it won't be very accurate in most cases so you kind of just gotta learn from that Senior software of, uh, engineer for a company that everyone has heard of. The learning never ends, and the tech is always changing. The minute you stop learning, new things fall behind. It's literally it. We were talking about that today in the Discord, like just time. Like one of the things I used to do is I used to work to like one in the morning, just learning new things with Unreal and like coding or anything like that. But since I've had a kid, at that time it's just gone. <laughs> it just doesn't exist anymore. And trying to keep up with it is quite the challenge. I'm looking forward to 5.2 dropping to, to check out their new um, coding language that they're introducing, which I think is a, an interesting way to go. So I probably have a fitting in game dev time with my freelance design job. Just get started developing my own uh, game. Uh, work comes in. That's it. It's not bad to have work though. That's my balance at the minute is like balancing general work with the template and everything else in between. Like I, I've got a plan to start a Udemy, like build a Udemy course for VR. And that is the wrong thing I just clicked on. Crap. But um, yeah, it's just getting that time to get it in there. Especially the little one and balancing hours between child care and a, like partner's job. 
So I've just got to keep going with it. Why will you not close? The hell? Okay. Look at this. At least you have work. Great things take time. It's slow. I, I won't lie. Like work coming in is quite slow. Um, I think the the issue at the minute is a lot of companies looking to do VR work or game dev work. They rely on their um ah oh, what's the word? Use money. They they rely on their little pots of money to get stuff done, and at the minute that doesn't come through until around April time in the UK. So it's just sitting back and waiting for that stuff to come in. But I'm 60 now, I'm running out of time. I feel 60. Man. Honestly, wake up some more and I'm like, I'm done. Uh, where is my branding folder? I got my branding. Where's my logo? There you are. Let's drag, take that one. 512, I'm not happy with how much blank space there is. So let's see if we can load this up. Let's add a background just so we've got something to see. That's the thing, like, what? what's this? Man, it's not even unreal that you've got to keep track of these days. You've got, to, you've got to look at every single program just changes so much. Why am I 32-bit? I don't know why it's so pixelated. It's driving me crazy. It'll be fine for now, though. Uh, let me just ranting. Um, what's the best way to do this? Object selection. Okay. Um, It's all gone. You can't hear it, but I'm rocking out some pretty good share right now. Wouldn't it be better as a vector graphic? Then you could export it as a every resolution you need. It is a vector graphic, but I don't really understand how to use InDesign. I paid someone for this. Um, but basically, we don't need it in vector anyway. It has to be some kind of resolution. If I had the time and I just wanted to sit down and learn InDesign, I could probably get it done. But for what we're after, we don't really need it. So that's JXR text. This one, we need the border. 
like that. Control I, nope. There we go. Loading and then the background should be fine. So now we've got each part as its own element, and we can kind of stagger those, I think, which could be quite nice. Yeah. If you need a tool to easily work with vectors, I'd recommend Affinity. Never heard of Affinity. Basically, the only reason I use Photoshop and InDesign when I need it is because I play the bloody, like, bloody subscription. Affinity. That's definitely not the right one. That's a job board or something. Bit of designer too. Huh. I'll take a look into it. Moza for new software. Um, P underscore GTXR underscore text. P underscore GTXR underscore Border P underscore loading text. Let's sort of the layers. We want power of two, so we don't want the individual layers. We want 512 by 512. What? You see how long it's been? It's been so long since I've used any of this. Can the size five twelve by five twelve? There we go. Ah, oh, I've got to do the problem. I could probably change that to. Power of two. I just position that separately. Export work. Oh, I got my stomach trembling. Hopefully, that exported. There we go. Have extremely good products. Finny photo is like Photoshop designer, is for SVG design and stuff like Illustrator. Publisher is pretty cool for UI programming. Publisher would be interesting. What am I missing? There we are. We're texture group UI. That's the thing though, with um, Unreal, you can't actually use vectors in it. I think you can with a plugin, maybe. Cool. So now we've got those, we can load in. We can load them all in. Let's 
Let's do the border. loading show and just because we're testing this i'm going to remove the hide loading screen so it won't disappear Oh, it should work with transparency, shouldn't it? It's not blocking it. Back all right. Goes back. Open that. Does it not remove? So as soon as it's set once, that is. Why is loading showing? Oh, I made myself dizzy. I don't know why it's offset as well. Try that.
Why is text working, but the rest of them aren't? Okay. So if I add the text in, I'm guessing it's going to disappear. Take the text out and see if it works. Yeah, the, the removing the loading text, there's a delay anyway on the stream, but it did remove it. But it's only doing one at a time. Oh, do we need to do um adds a splash element to the loading screen? Do I have to do this? Rotation, I think, should be okay. Size, delta, rotation. We're not rotating. Um, GDXR border. Next. And then... Loading. So I think the idea is that you have these as your individual layers, and then you have a main one in the background. So let's just like add that, something like that. Looks like the text is not transparent. Background is covering the rest. Yeah, it's looking like that, but it just seems to be loading one. They do have transparency. God. Set loading screen first, add to after. That was the next step and then it crashed. <laughs> Has to be an image setting, but I'm no expert. It's currently set to UI, so it's loading in fine with the actual main piece she said set loading screen first and then add loading screen splash 
let's just add the GDX album. Text. So we got the loading text and then the actual text translation two as well. I've done this in the past. It's just been so long. I can't remember how I did it. There we go. So it was set load screen and then add the splashes afterwards. The hard part is to just make it look good. I don't know why my frame rate is so bad. Oh, it's because Photoshop's open. That's what it's going to be. Crash again. I think we're going to crash again. Photoshop destroys my frame rate when I'm doing anything with Unreal Open. I don't actually know why. Yeah, we crashed. Oh, save all. Let's close that. Now we actually crashed. Nicola, hi, I have one problem right now. Do you know, can you bake lights with GPU light mass on MetaHuman or MetaHuman works with Lumen? Um, I've got no idea. I haven't used MetaHuman. Um, I know GPU light mass has issues building for VR though, but I haven't touched GPU light mass. I've never had a good results from it, to be honest. Might be worth dropping by the Discord though, and then asking out in here. Um, I'd probably do the general channel, and then if somebody in there has used it before, they might be able to help you out. But I've never used the GPU light mass because it. it Back when I was trying to use it, it didn't really work well for VR. And it doesn't work for mobile VR either. Having the plugin enabled causes it to, like, the build to fail. Bit offset. Don't know why it's slightly skewed. Probably something to do with the way the image is exported out. GP light mass for VR works works great for me. Oh, does it work on um? Standalone, like Oculus. Uh, 
freaking quest. So, Try to figure out why it's offset. That's a nice distance. Right. 1.5. It's like offset from where I am. That's the bit that I'm not too sure what's going on with. Unless it's just my room scale set up a bit awkwardly. Might actually just be the room scale. Do you have a good tutorial for doors in VR? I can't find a good tutorial for doors to lock your motion controller when you grab a door handle and rotate the door while you're grabbing. Um, not really, I've been working on with the other, my old template, which I plan on adding into here, but it's not exactly the easiest thing to build. You need to lock the rotation of the door to the controller for where it is in world space, so it pivots. And then you have to also use the controller on the door handles as separate. So the, the best thing I can recommend is have the door handles as an actor, its own thing, which is then attached to a static mesh of the door as a child actor, and then you've got the door which rotates around. It's Yeah, you kind of got to play around with it. It's not the easiest thing. It's not as easy as just saying do this, this, and this, unfortunately. I think I might have to export these as individual layers, so it just so it keeps the positioning. Save a copy. I think that does layers. Yeah. 
Because it's just these two really that I need. I don't even need the loading text. Why is the image size? Didn't even change. Really annoying. I wonder if it's offset and that's what's causing the like visual offset. It's like it's well, it's definitely aligned. That looks better. It's still quite offset though. It's it's quite over to the side. It makes me think it's something to do with the player. Let's try that. The end we snap the player to center no i'm still doing it i think it's just the room position actually because it's it's just slightly over so i'm probably not going to worry about that actually
Nice. That feels quite nice. And I'm really like happy that it shows on the screen now. Well, when we first start, it does the screen load, which is because this is firing. There we go. So it does that one. So this is happening afterwards. So when we start, we need to do like a show loading screen, really. Now we can keep that bit. Nice. So as soon as you press play, technically load in, then we fade into the level. Inputs are not working. So, in the player, something to do with the event remove. The inputs are move like working. Seventy seven, bye. Thanks for dropping by. The idea is to figure out why we haven't got movement. Why does that? Oh, that's doing it. Cool. Oh, my bio is Simon. <laughs> that's on me for trying to keep up with the chat. LinkedIn's exploding. Two seconds.
Oh. Oh my god, I'm hungry. Quite happy with that. Added load screen example. Let's add that to the list of features. Conditions. Uh, damage can't find out why the trackpad buttons on my Windows Mixed Reality controllers aren't working. With Windows Mixed Reality, I don't know if you need the Steam plugin enabled, even with OpenXR. Kind of similar how um, building to the Quest, you need the Meta plugin. You might need to go to uh, Edit Project Settings or Edit Plugins and then also make sure that you have Steam VR. Oh, it's deprecated now, it's going to be removed. No point using it. So just stick with OpenXR. Um in Steam. Wait there, let's see if I can load up Steam without it crashing. Don't see that. Let's see if we do this. Hopefully it loads. Connecting. Oh, um, where's Steam VR? It's all. There's always an update. Every time you've got to do something. You can tell I don't use Steam very much. So if I launch Steam VR. Then you need to make sure that OpenXR is enabled in here for it to work with Unreal. So there we go. So in settings, I think it's settings or developer. Settings developer. There, so you need to set the Steam VR as OpenXR runtime. You need to make sure that's done, and then that should allow you to get inputs from Steam through it. So make sure your Steam set up for the, the runtime, OpenXR runtime, and then you should be good to go. I also know I didn't hide my name, but don't add me on Steam. I I don't really use it. Quit Steam. Discord's doing alright, I'll check all that later on. Is Steam VR still needed once OpenXR is the main UE system? It, Steam needs to be open in the background, but it needs the OpenXR system enabled, like what I just showed. So you will need Steam in the background and then you can connect through to it to the headset. Um, okay, did I add OpenXR load screen? I did. Duplicate this.
just jot down some notes in this. So this works quite nice now because any blueprint all you have to do is call this little set here and that will automatically screen fade activate the load screen and then display it then open the level and then once the player loads into the new level it'll automatically be removed which is quite nice Cool. Oh. Very nice. Okay. Same instance. I might have to have a little break in a minute and then go get something to eat, just so people know. DVR shuts down when I start VR. The so Steam VR should be open in the background, and then you open Unreal Engine, and then you can press play in editor. That should load up for you.
I wonder if I could just remove the set, you know. Issue two of Steam VR. I get very low FPS if I try to run the package Windows version on a Link Quest Two. Um, for Quest Two, you're best using the Oculus Desktop app and selling that. So that's what I have. So I have. Um, so I have the Oculus Desktop app open, open, and then. Do, 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 which one is it? Gen. And then the, the OpenXR runtime is set to Oculus. So you need to make sure you've only got one or the other open and then run through that. If you're using Oculus, I recommend using Oculus Desktop. And then if you're using Steam, I recommend Steam. Is there a config on Steam VR side? I don't believe so. Um, you do need. Let me have a look. If you're doing desktop VR, you do need to make sure you're running um this node. So enable HMD 
and this will activate it in the .exe file. If you're running it as a .exe, you need to make sure it's enable HMD is ticked and has been added. You just do that on event begin play. To be honest, I could probably remove that and put it inside of the game instance. Even with SteamVR now running no input for the trackpad buttons. Hmm. I don't know if they've changed them. I'll need to take a look into it, I think. Set up the the valve index with the wave the, the ones and go through that. Test them all in here, smooth look motion. This should just be uh, Vive, I believe. I don't think there's any new ones. Vive. And then trackpad. Because you just use the trackpad for the, the Vive ones. These should be the inputs you need. Only thing I can think of is that you're adding them in and then not adding any new input mapping contexts to this list. That would stop the inputs working. And then making sure that they're actually set. Um, no project settings. That they're set in the OpenXR input. Because that's all you should need. really weird everything's working just the 1d axis and trackpad events aren't working oh what you could try is inside of the inputs themselves so the input actions um i had this diff i had this issue with the guns firing yeah. what have we got shoot right shoot left try adding the axis 1d flow and then add a dead zone so modifiers just hit the plus and then add a, a dead zone modifier which already comes with it and see if you can get that to work it was fun hanging out good night good night chicken thank you for dropping by i think we made some good progress so far but i do think i'm gonna go for a Half hour break, and then might as well come back and then just carry on working on some more stuff. Um, let me finish writing this. Wait.
Then I'm going to do 20 minutes, just so I can cook something and then eat it. I am so hungry. I haven't eaten anything today. I'll be back sooner than 20. Well, I'll see how it goes. Uh, what's the time? Awesome. All right, everyone. I will be back in 20 minutes and then we'll do some more stuff. Um, I'd end the stream, but there's no point having two of them and making everyone come back. So, all right. Give me 20 minutes and I'll be right back.
Hello, I'm back. Chris, yeah, that worked. Thanks for helping me out fix the FPS issue on Windows Desktop. Awesome. So I just had enable HMD, set Oculus as active, open XR runtime in Oculus Desktop apps. Wicked. To get you back on track. <laughs> Check that out. Why just move that back to add? I think. I think I might leave the splash screen example. Add feet mesh to teleport location. Could do that. Add grabbing from a distance. That's a lot of work. We've already attempted that a couple of times. Player damage. That is something I would like to add. Have it appear on the screen. For HMD, we've got a screen fade mesh, which is essentially a plane that exists in front of the player. And that's what the dynamic material gets added to. Problem is, there's so many ways to, to demo damage and like display damage in VR. So I kind of need to pick one that works for almost everyone. One thing I would like to do is add a pistol whip game mode to this. But I might have to do those ex those as different projects. Add vignette option for smooth local motion. So when you move the thumbstick, it fades out around the edges. That could be a simple addition. I need to double check the spelling of vignette, but I think for now it should be fine. The first thing we need is to I can't remember what the name of the node is that I'm looking for. Oh crap. Um
I remember what to, to search for for the name. Ah, there it is. Give a temporal A. Compiling shaders? Probably not. <laughs> okay, let's just remove that sphere mask. Bad. Oh, that's right. Have it kind of like that. I think it might have to be full transparency. I'm not too sure yet. Instead of using the mask. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to have... This green fade activate as the same same time if you've got like a, a red damage effect on the screen. Let's make it visible. It should be slap bang in the middle of the player's camera. I wonder if I have two planes. So keep one for the screen fade and then have another one behind it.
Oh, that looks awful. Ah, uh, yo, ew. I remember how to blur this. Losing my mind. It's going to crash again. Yep, that's not happy. Just as I go to save. I think it's going to crash anyway as soon as I press play. It always does. Yep. So frustrating. Friends. Kinda works.
don't like the idea of having these overlapped on top of each other. Um, I've got at least some part of the issue now. My head says different sensor states for detecting whether it's active or actually were, are being worn. So even though it, is, it doesn't transfer control of data, you need to wear it in order to get the control of data as soon as you put the headset transfers. Yeah, it's the same with the Quest. It's got the sensor on the inside that needs to check whether you're actually pressing play. Two seconds, just trying to figure out a better way to do this. Anyone's wondering, I'm watching a Valim tutorial. <laughs> it's more to see how they do it on the interaction toolkit. So they've got a sphere with a material as well. So the way they're doing it, is if I bring this over, is they have a sphere with a dynamic material on it, which allows you to control through there. So it's just a standard material, but the question is how do they trigger it? So they're driving it through a dynamic material that just gets its position in world space. So I don't know. I don't know how you can get a material to get a velocity velocity in Unreal. I think that would be an interesting thing to do because we've got the player already there. If we can just have the screen fade mesh and then a sphere that exists around the player's camera, I think that would be rather nice setup. I always press the finger with my hand to activate it, but I thought it activated itself. It took me two days to figure out. <laughs> yeah, give me a bit of a pain. So the question is, how do we get a material to know if it's moving? So 
I don't think I've ever seen anyone do this before. Like, set up a dynamic material that works that way. It could be set up as a child actor. So that child actor feeds in the information to the sphere to create the dynamic material. So if it's moving, it'll open and then it'll close. You go from there. Basically, just that. Just use ball position. This might be a bit too much to do with stream, to be fair. I think this might have to be a, a child actor. Let's do the eight score. Eight net. Yeah. You can set this to two sided in a minute. And me. So now it just needs, once that moves, then we increase the, the, the radius and then reduce it. So it would be one as max and then we would lerp. Yeah.
to So we have that, materials, duplicate this to create a material instance. So as long as I change this, it will change the scale. I've also lost it. Lower the number. like so. Trying to figure out the best way to pull this information through. So let's just I've got a reference in our material instance. Play. And then for event tick, we would need some kind of movement variable or velocity pushed into this. Um, ideally, just thumbstick would work. forwards radius See if we're just getting anything. Uh. 
Um, Okay, I might have to look into this another point. I do like the idea of having it as a sphere, though, that exists around the player. And then when it moves, it kind of just updates, like retracts. But I don't know if there's a way to do that through a dynamic material. So have the camera built into it so if the camera moves then it updates the material you fall Camera position wall space. There must be some kind of node in here that tells us when we're moving. World coordinate nodes. Ooh. No, if it projects them into world space, that's not what we're after.
Alan, how big is the map on the GDXR VR template? It's not big. It's not big at all. So this is the whole thing. I do I do have some concept out there I'm planning on like rebuilding this thing. Make it look a bit nicer at some point. But right now it's quite it's relatively small. The idea is you you would ideally build your own map. Just create a new level and then use the game instance that's already set up. That would help you get started. Delete those for now, otherwise I will forget about them. Why is it still referenced in our player? Okay, still working. Let's jump back in. Still loading. Still working. Really happy with that. It never used to display in editor for the OpenXR, so now that you can actually see it, it makes it feel much nicer. Never mind, I see. That's right. Is there something you're you're looking for? That's one thing I could do with adding to this as well as the save, just to save the player settings. You can go from there. But I'm looking at redesigning the whole lot, so it might be best to wait till I've done it. Unless I look at adding just a player save. It's been a long time since I've tackled save games. Um. <laughs> No, I was comparing with VR GK 2.0 template. Which one's that? Now let me have a look. I will tell you what's different. Marketplace. Virtual game kit. For one, mine costs a third <laughs> off the off the top off the top. Um, we don't have IK systems, which they've got in this. Um, but as they say, it's only available for four point two seven. I think, if I remember correctly, VRGK they're planning on um, redesigning almost everything with C plus plus because they were using Chaos Physics or they were using physics based VR, and it wasn't working anymore. It doesn't work with five point one. Which is why their template is only for uh, four point two seven. It only runs on that. But yeah, they got a quite a, quite a lot of additional features in that.
But I plan on doing some stuff, similar stuff to it. Which would be pretty good. I want to do the backpacks as well, which is quite nice. But um, yeah, so my template overall isn't focused on physics. Um, the idea is to target Quest as a base platform, so it's to make it as performant and optimized as possible. So if you need a project with physics, something like Half-Life, Alex Interactions, that kind of thing, then your best bet is to go for something like VRGK. But if you're starting out pretty small, then I think mine will be quite helpful uh, features. Yeah, so this is all physics based, full body avatars, gravel distance, vehicle mounting, physical input buttons and sliders, pause menu graphics, full demo. Yeah, if you if you want to have a look through what mine's got, feel free to have a look through the actual documents. It is, but there's a link on the actual Epic Games Marketplace. But um, yeah, mine's quite different to this. Yeah, I've got I've got five different movement methods. Well, six if you include the snap. So you got full control over it, and then. In here as well, you can control the entire character. So player settings are controlled through a data asset table. And this allows you to have multiple data assets for multiple different players. So you can kind of build it in, build it in how you want. But yeah. Two different approaches to two different problems. But as I said, mine's non-physics based. Maybe in the future. screen examples done through oculus i don't think i need that anymore i've done the load screen example the only if I, if I did a splash screen it would be its own level that would allow you more control over it i think to go from there kavan just hopping on what you're building nothing at the minute i'm trying to decide where we're going next but i've been streaming for quite a while now so um just trying to figure it out we've been working on creating a load screen so if I press play, when you start it actually says loading and then you can move around, it'll do the screen fades, load levels, show loading screens and kind of do it all for you. So that's what we've been working on this stream. So it feels, feels quite nice actually. Yeah. So the idea is to just figure out something to work on now for a little bit before I wrap up, I think. Um, implement meta sounds is something I want to take a look at as well. I need a way to do that. That's not using other sound effects. That's using my own. Is that a transition map? No, it's, it's not. It loads on the screen, so and if I jump in. So a bit of background. If you want to load a level, I have it set up. So you just call this section here. So you get the game instance and you say load new level and give it a name. That then talks to the game instance, which creates, um, which loads this section. It fires, it stores a name to the level that we want to load. And then we call screen fade from the player. And once screen fade is complete, we then load the OpenXR map. And that's done through this. That's literally it to just load the create load screen. And then we open the level. It goes from there. I can't see the whole stream. I watched later, but very interesting work. Should I buy the template? That'd be awesome. It's currently got 40 sales on the um, marketplace, which I'm really happy about. So there's 40 people on there and there's like 150 using it over on Patreon. So it's kind of up to you. But people seem to be benefit from it. <laughs> Hopefully this update will be quite nice. You're loving those interfaces. I see them everywhere. Blueprint interfaces are life. I don't actually have that many. I've got a couple. Um, 
I think I can remove that load screen one or load new level. I think I changed that into screen fade. Maybe not. It's something just to keep it from being too confusing. But um, yeah, blueprint interfaces are a way to talk to each other without having to worry about the actual actors. And it allows a lot more modularity for use. So if you delete something, you're not hard locked into it by casting, for example. So the only thing that casts in the player, um, let me graph, is the hand animations. And they're done because they're already loaded. So it doesn't matter if we've cast them to them because they're already in memory. So we've got that casting. Um, I genuinely don't think I have it anywhere else. Graph, movement graph. I've got one cast there, but that's that again is to the hands, so they're already loaded. And then, yeah, that's it. We don't use event tick either, so interfaces are life. That's the benefit of using interfaces as well. I can duplicate the player, modify this one, and it's going to work with any blueprint or actor in the, the world. It shouldn't make a different what difference to what's going on. But yeah, if, if you're not using interfaces, you, you really should. You should be taking, <laughs> taking a deep dive into them. I'm thinking I might just wrap up the stream here. We've been going for three hours and 10 minutes. Um, family's on the way home. So by the time we start something, I think we'll be getting in. It'll be a bit of a little bit of a distraction. And then I can take a look through and see what else to work on. Because there's a few things to go. Okay, um, I'll try and, actually I'm going to promise anything. Um, I'm going to keep working on this and then hopefully do some more streams as well this week, which I think would be quite nice. But once, once the update goes live, I'll let everybody know in the Discord and over on Patreon of what's going on with it. And don't forget, if you want to, you can actually check out the template in the Epic Games Marketplace. It doesn't allow you to do reviews, unfortunately, but it's going pretty strong. And if anything, I just need to add more stuff to it. But yeah, you can do the drop down, and it's got a list of everything that's currently included in it. And I'm pretty sure I've missed some stuff anyway. But yeah, so that's going to be it for this stream, I think. Um, make sure to hop over to the Discord if you haven't already. We've got a decent amount of people going. I think we're at 1,700, which is good. Um, I'm going to generate new link. Copy link. We're going to post that inside of the stream. If I can find a link to it. Which would be pretty good. Uh, control V, Control C. If you're using the quest with a project based on the Epic template, the UE OpenXR plugin is enough, and the user just needs to enable OpenXR in the Oculus software, right? Yes. So, for example, this project is built entirely on OpenXR. We don't use any plugins or any features from the MetaXR tool. So, if you're to right click, and then in here, I'm pretty sure there's a section for Meta XR. Um, XR or Meta, something like that. So if I search Meta, I think there's stuff in here. Oh, they kind of changed it. I know there's some stuff in this section, the components. So these, so like, 
Oculus XR events and pass through layers. If you're using these, then you'll have to have the Oculus plugin enabled. But if you're just using OpenXR and you're targeting like any platform, then the only reason you need to enable the Meta plugin is if you wish to build it to the headset as a standalone APK. But it just has to exist. You don't have to do anything with it. But make sure you install it correctly. I've got a video on the channel if you need to. If you need to follow that. Because it doesn't go into a plugins folder anymore. It's got to go somewhere else in your engine. But um, yeah. That should pretty much be it. Enable it and then project settings. Project settings, you've got the Meta XR plugin. And then you might just want to change your Epic Native OpenXR vendor exclusion thingy and set some stuff in here to make things a little bit nicer. But other than that, that's all you have to do. Yeah. But yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for dropping by. Um, I will let you all know when I'm doing another stream and hopefully it'll be soon. It's just kind of when I've got the house to myself and it's a bit more quiet.